people are often looking for a good cheap used truck now this Ford was cheap it was thirty five hundred dollars but is it good well I'm going to show you this is a 2001 F-250 that the customer just bought for thirty five hundred bucks got all the parts it's even got one of these fancy lift gates on the back let's check it out well, look at the cavern front seat. Well, it shows it was well used. <laughs> you can always reupholster these or put padding in if you want. You know, this is a classic pickup truck with a split bench seat. It was made in the USA. This particular one's got 159,598 miles on it. And as you can see, it starts right up. And the AC still blows nice and cold. And as old as it is, it's still got some cruise control stuff and buttons on the steering column, dependable automatic transmission with overdrive. And as you can see under here, it's two wheel drive. The front wheels are just for spinning. It's not four wheel drive. If you don't need four wheel drive, take Scotty's advice. Don't buy all wheel drive. Much more dependable with just rear wheel drive, especially these Fords as they age. The front wheel drive get clunky as you turn and things wear. It's a good solid front end when it's only rear wheel drive. Much simpler to maintain and a little bit better gas mileage. Now as you check under the hood, you can see it's got a venerable V8. Now this particular one is a 5.4 liter. Just look at the intake. Puts out 250 horsepower and aside from some of them having problems with the spark plug popping out of the holes, which Ford fixed, they got better spark plugs for them now. It's not something you have to worry about anymore. They're extremely reliable engines. This one still sounds good. Nice and solid, no clacking. The only thing you really hear is the fan clutch. Air. Now this V8 engine is tied in with a four-speed automatic with overdrive, which is a very dependable unit. Now of course it's always the transmission that wears out first on these things, but my customers who kept them forever, four or five hundred thousand miles or more, a lot of times they would just go and put a Ford factory remanufactured automatic transmission in. When they broke, a lot of times they'll go 250,000 miles and when they break, you just put a factory remand in and you can get a lot more miles out of them. They are fixable and they can last a long time. And the way it's set up, this can tow up to 12,500 pounds. You need something to tow with, what you want is a V8 engine. Big heavy body, something that's not going to flex. These things are made for towing. A lot of guys put goosenecks in the back to tow big stuff. Now this one's just set up with the single rear wheels. You can get dually rear wheels, but really, this is a bargain truck. You pay 3,500 bucks. You're better off with the singles. You put duallys, you start pulling too much with an old vehicle, things are gonna wear out faster. Let's face reality. Most people don't want to. Old Scotty doesn't want to sometimes, but when it comes to vehicles, Face reality. Brand new one of these started at like $34,000 up. This guy paid $3,500 for this. Don't expect you're gonna buy something like this and then start using it as a work truck, carrying 12,500 pounds, filling the bed with rocks and stuff. You can do stuff, but it's not something that you're gonna put 20,000 miles a year on and do heavy, heavy duty work. It's a nice, cheap work truck. Now this does have the check engine light on, so we're going to scan it and we're also going to see what kind of shape everything's in by analyzing the data. So we'll plug in the data port right here. Simple to do and read the data. You can't hide from a machine. And I noticed while it's sitting there idling, it's got a little bit of a misfire, a little shaking at idle, so there's going to be something wrong. But it might not be anything big. Now the main thing is it has power train control codes. So we're going to check those codes. Read codes. Check all system isn't complete. That we don't care about. P1117, the engine coolant temperature circuit is a fault. So it probably needs a new engine coolant temperature sensor, maybe some wiring. And the cylinder head temperature sensor has a high input. So that's probably bad too. We'll do some more tests. Ford has automated tests. They always have. So now it's doing some tests to see if there's anything else going on. Well, there's nothing outrageous. And as we check the electrical system codes, we can see there's a bunch of higgly piggly ones. Parking lamp switch failure, driver safety belt switch, brake circuit failure, open or shorter to ground, accessory delay relay circuit failure, bunch of minor electrical stuff. You fix what you need to fix. Let's say the brake lights don't work. Then you fix the brake lights off and the switch goes bad or the wiring. Pretty simple fixes, not stuff you got to spend a lot of time on. Truck like this, you want it to have brake lights, headlights, turn signals. As long as it passes a safety inspection, who cares about the rest? It's an old truck you paid $3,500 for. More important is the live data, which I'm going to check now to see what kind of shape the vehicle is in. See, there's all kinds of data. The interesting thing is there's 
no misfire currently detected. It's a little bit off, but it's not bad enough to trip the codes. These old trucks, they're never gonna run perfect, but they can run good enough. Seeing all these no faults, showing that those systems are working. Now, as you can see, the fuel trim, presently this bank, number one is minus 5.46, and number two, it's adding a little bit of fuel, but then every once in a while it starts to subtract. Even the other one, you can see, now it's adding and now it's subtracting, now it's subtracting. But, you know, it's a maximum of five something percent. You're gonna see that in any old vehicle. Computers are compensating for wear. Maybe the fuel injectors aren't spraying enough gas or sometimes too much. It's always gonna be going back and forth because it's an old vehicle and it's trying to make it run as good as it can. Important part, this is all the transmission data. I'm looking for bad stuff there. Certainly not a perfect vehicle, but good enough. Let's take it for a road test. That doesn't idle all that bad. A little bit of a shake, but hey. And? Sounds like a big truck. No particularly horrible noises. And for a Ford, the power steering isn't groaning much. A little bit of a uh, uh but that's it. They'll always grind a little bit in the Ford, but this one hardly at all. Now it's old and heavy. Let's see how it takes off. We'll floor it. And it shakes and rattles. Doesn't have all of its horses anymore, but you can see it still shifts pretty good. It's not jerking. It's not a race truck but it can still go and still haul stuff. Well, it rides like a truck. <laughs> it's a Ford F-250. It bounces over the bumps, you know, <laughs> but it feels solid enough. Yeah, it bounces around. It's got old shocks on it, but it's still a reliable, dependable truck for 3,500 bucks. And being a big Ford truck, still has decent brakes. Brakes on these things are always solid. Now really, it has no extremely odd noises. The bushing sound okay. Power steering pump just makes a little uh, when you turn it every once in a while. Not in bad shape for an old truck that was only 3,500 bucks. And really, this power lift gate on the back, what a bonus. And as we look under the truck and look at the size of that rear end differential, this was a solid made truck to last a long time. And what do you see dripping under the truck? Nothing, it's not even leaking anything. It's a miracle, it still has a complete exhaust system on it that's nice and quiet. As the saying goes, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look this $3,500 truck in the mouth either. It's a pretty good deal for 3,500 bucks. Aside from this ding in the back, the rest of the truck is solid and great shape. Still looks decent. Look at those massive tow hooks on the front. And even this massive dent on the front bumper has something to say. What does it say? It says, I can dish it out and I can take it and still go down the road, solid. This isn't some cheap, crumply plastic piece of junk. It's solid metal and it may be dented, but it's still there, which pretty much sums up this whole truck, solid. And it's still there. Yeah, it isn't brand new. It isn't perfect, but hey, for 3,500 bucks, it is one sweet work truck. Now this is a 1994 CK. As you can see when you open the door, well at least you partially can because a lot of it's faded away, it was made in Canada. Now personally I've always been satisfied with Canadian made vehicles, whether they're Fords, Chevys, or Toyotas. And back in 94, they were building these things pretty solid. Because if you check it out, aside from some scratches, the original paint job is still decent. And this one is the long bed. You got a lot of room inside here for carrying stuff. And back in the day, of course, they had chrome plated bumpers. They can take bashes, they don't care. They still keep going. You can see where people have smashed up stuff and they just patched it up, but they're solid trucks. Now this one was purchased for $2,000 and the owner only had to spend $400 in parts to get it running good. He had to put a fuel pump and some other minor stuff on. No big deal. And as we look under the hood, now it's got the venerable 350 cubic inch engine, but everybody goes by liters now. So that's the 5.7 liter engine. Now, yes, he needs to get an air cleaner assembly. It didn't come with that, but hey, there's plenty of those in junkyards. You can just get a aftermarket one to stick on top. Now, these are not racing engine. This one puts out around 200 horsepower. 
but it's got plenty of torque. That's the advantage of the V8 specifications. It got a lot of torque. This thing had 350 pound feet of torque when it was first made. I'm sure it's lost a little bit of it now, but it still has a lot of pulling power. That's why you see guys always doing donuts and burnouts in these pickup trucks. Even though they're not necessarily a lot of horsepower, they got a lot of torque and they can spin the tires. Great for pulling. And that's what one of these pickups is known for. Pulling stuff. Towing stuff. Hauling things in the back. That's what they're made for. And when you check under this truck, you'll see the transmission. It's all shiny because it was totally rebuilt before the customer bought it. In this case, he bought it from a mechanic who got it for practically nothing, fixed the transmission, then sold it on. It's going to need a little exhaust work, as you will soon hear. But that's nothing a little welding can't fix. And even though it's old as the hill being a 94, there's still a reasonable amount of original exhaust components. They're going to be rotten, but on Chevy, you can get parts anyways dirt cheap. You can send away for them online, you know, or you can go to a muffler shop where they'll just... They got universal pipes, they can just cut them and weld on wherever the holes are. Or if you're really cheap, if there's one rotten hole, you can get cans, cut them open, put them over, clamp them on with radiator clamps. There's a lot of ways you can fix exhaust holes. And again, here, you know, it's all... The AC still works. It still blows cold air. Now, this thing can still tow over 4,000 pounds, so it's decent for pulling stuff around and with the big bag. There's a lot of work left in this old work truck. Yeah, it's got 182,000 miles on it. I've seen these old 94s go well over three, 400,000 miles. The weakest part is their transmission. And as I said, the previous owner, a mechanic, rebuilt this transmission because it was going out. That's typical on these. If you're looking at one and the transmission isn't working right, don't pay much for it. My customer paid two grand for it, and that was after the transmission had been rebuilt, not before. If it was before, you would offer them less than a thousand bucks for the truck. Sure, it makes a lot of noise, but it starts right up. Let's take it up the hill and see what this old baby can still do. For an old truck, it still handles decent. Like they say, it drives like a truck, because it is a truck. And when you're just cruising along, Hey, it's pretty smooth on a smooth road for an old truck. Listen to it when you're just gliding. It's very quiet. <laughs> and look, the electric windows still go down and up. I'm going to down. It's getting kind of hot. And strangely enough, when we started up, the check engine light was on. But after driving a little hard, look, it's off. It's not on anymore. And it's not running bad. And anyway, I'm getting a little long in the tooth and old. Hey, a rocking chair? Not a bad idea. A truck rocking chair. When you go under the seat, really, all it needs is one bolt here that it won't rock anymore. Not that big of a deal. So really, for a truck that looks this decent and runs decent, $2,000 isn't such a bad deal. Especially if you want to haul stuff, tow stuff. Hey, this engine's still got a lot of life in it. Yeah, it's the old-fashioned throttle body fuel injector. It's a lot simpler than the modern stuff, a lot easier to fix. Let's say the injectors go bad. They're right on the top. Right here. One, two, they just bolt out. You can bolt new ones in. A simple job. Places like AutoZone, any discount auto parts store, they still sell this stuff and stock it. They don't cost that much. Easy to repair and replace. Lots of things are easy on these old trucks. Look at this, working space galore. Spark plugs are easy to get to. Distributors easy to get to. Everything is simple to get to on this thing. And part of the problem of this was he had to put a rebuilt distributor. In There's the rebuilt distributor. One bolt in and out. Not this complex electronic crap that modern cars have. Sure, they're not as fuel efficient, but rarely. Big old truck, they're all gas hogs. The brand new ones are gas hogs too. Unless you're getting into this insanity of 10 speed transmissions and GDI turbochargers, all that stuff's gonna break. I'll tell you right now, you're not gonna find any of these GDI turbo engines around running like this thing is when they're 26 years old. No way. Those things will all be in a scrapyard. They'll cost too much to fix, people will junk them. These. They're still going, they can go a long time. And if you're lucky enough to live further enough south that they don't rust much, hey, you find one of these that isn't rusted, 
Whew! Like I say, the Canadians, they knew how to build these things. Unfortunately, the ones in Canada are pretty all rusted out from the salt they put on the roads in the winter, but Tennessee and Texas, hey, got a solid frame on this thing. It can go for decades more if you want to just keep it up, maintain it. And like this one was done, the transmission was rebuilt. If the engine goes, you can fix that too. It's just the Pushrod V8. Easy, simple repairs that anybody who's knowledgeable about cars can do. So if you're looking for a pickup truck for two or three grand, you find one like this, buy it. We're looking at a 2013 Tundra. The owner's trying to decide, should he keep it? Should he get rid of it, get something else? Well, we're gonna go through the whole thing and show you what would be a smart move and what would be a dumb move. It's a V8 Tundra, in excellent shape. It's the platinum one, and it's a four by four. Got 144,000 miles on it. It's made in San Antonio, Texas. Basically everything you want in the truck. Room in the back, baby seat holder, old school DVD player up there. <laughs> it is nine years old, so we're talking a little bit old school. And under the hood is the whole meat and potatoes. It's a 5.7 liter V8. These things can run forever. The one that has a timing chain, not the belt. You never have to think about changing the belt on this because it's got a timing chain. My grandson's got a 2012. We just towed an F-250 that weighed about 9,000 pounds flatbed with his giant trailer using his 2012 that's got 220,000 miles on it and it had no problems. Going up the hill, yeah. It didn't get into overdrive, it didn't go into lower gear, but it made the trip perfectly fine. These are extremely strong engines. If you're looking at an older one that's got a timing belt, you gotta realize one thing. There's nothing wrong with those engines with the timing belt. They're excellent engines too, but they're interference engines. If the timing belt breaks, pistons hit the valves, goodbye. Valves will bend, it'll cost you a fortune to rebuild or replace the engine. This has got to change. You don't have to think about it. If you do buy one with a timing belt, believe me, every 90 to 100,000 miles, change the timing belt, the water pump, the tensioner, all the pulleys. You don't want to ruin an engine for that. This engine has a timing chain. You don't have to think about any of that stuff. It's working fine for him, other than the TPS, the tire pressure monitoring. It's nine years old. The batteries are going to go out on the stupid things. Who cares? You know, that you don't care about. The engine, the tranny works fine. The AC still works. Everything on it still works perfectly fine. Even the DVD still works. He tried it out last week for his kids. He is thinking of maybe selling the truck because before COVID, it was his daily driver. But now it's just leisure driving around he's got to make a decision on what he wants here because hey fishing hunting stuff like that with it they're great for that right if he doesn't want to do all that kind of stuff he could sell it for an awful lot of money now and get something else but you still want to have a truck that's going to last keep this thing forever don't waste your time selling it buying something else v8 this isn't the new v6 in the tundra that's all they have with the problems with the wastegate which is an extremely complicated dual fuel injection system gasoline direct injection and normal it's very complex stuff you want a v8 engine this would be the one to get i would not get rid of it if i wanted a truck i'd keep this thing forever because a lot of people say oh my car's worth a lot of money i'm gonna sell it now yeah well what are you gonna do you gotta buy another one right and you're not gonna get a deal on that you're gonna get screwed over buying another vehicle and in this case he's driven it all these years he loves it so the only real downside of this vehicle unless i find a problem when i scan it is that it's a big Toyota Tundra, so it gets crappy gas mileage. All big trucks give crappy gas mileage. Go on the highway, go fast, carry stuff, pull stuff. A little engine is gonna get crappy gas mileage too. It isn't gonna make any difference once you start pulling stuff. When you pull stuff, all those gas mileage figures go out the window. Plug in the scan tool and run a full scan. As usual, it's a Toyota, so <laughs> you can see everything's green, but we're gonna go beyond that. We're gonna go through the whole kit and caboodle. We're we'll doing all module scan. As you can see, it's gone through everything. Gone through 17 systems. Everything's zero so far. There's one, three, okay. The tire pressure binary system, we already knew that because the batteries are dead, so we don't care. The main body code is lost communication with door control module. I see that all the time. You get a little glitchy with the door control module, your power locks or something. Squirrely one time when it was probably eight degrees out here in 
Tennessee for a while. So eh, I'm going to race them all, but it, no big deal. And as we scroll up, the engine and ECT have one. So let's see what that is. Startability malfunction. This is yet another code that pops up. If your battery is a little weak, it doesn't start. It's more or less a ghost code. He's got no problems. He said starting a car. So they often get that ghost code. It means nothing. And as for the rest of it, there's nothing. Now I'm starting it up. And I did notice it sounded a little bit weak, so let's check the battery. So this machine tested, we'll do that. Battery test. Turn on the headlights. On go to headlights. Start the engine. And as you can see, he needs a battery. So that makes total sense. That's why the door module probably had to code. Definitely the startability problem, because if the computer gets below a certain voltage threshold from the battery being weak, it'll trip that code. It was still starting at everything from him, but it makes total sense, because his battery is really old looking, and he admitted it's probably been over five years since he replaced the battery. You're lucky if you get that out of a battery today, but it's a lesson for everybody to learn. You might take your car to a mechanic because you check engine lights on and have a bunch of codes and they'll try to sell you the kitchen sink right it can be as simple as all you need is a stupid battery so always get it tested you can see how fast batteries are tested you could buy a machine like that or you can go to an auto parts store where they test it well enough talk let's take it for a ride and see how it rides okay we'll start it up again and like I say, Crank's a little slow because the battery's weak, but he's going to put a new battery in. Hey, look, even though it's nine years old, still got a backup camera. Sure, it's not as efficient as the new ones, but it's good enough. Keep me from hitting the pole. Big truck high up in the air. Hey, and with that V8 engine, this thing's got power. But it's power that lasts. This isn't a Chrysler that's going to fall apart. I've seen these things with 600,000 miles and they pretty much still ran the same. Nice leisurely driving the countryside. We're going to take to our little drag strip here. Here we come to our little drag strip. We'll stop here and let's see what this thing can do. Ready, Mark? Get set. Go. Well, I'd say for a four-wheel drive vehicle, this thing takes off pretty good. You can't argue that. Hey, maybe nine years old have 144,000 miles. But as far as I can feel, it runs the same as it did when it was brand new. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this truck. He's just going to decide, does he want something that gets better gas mileage and doesn't need a truck? But if he wants a truck, he'd be foolhardy to get rid of this thing. He'd be buying something else that isn't nearly as good as this thing. This truck, being a 2013 Tundra, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the pinnacle of the best truck ever made on planet earth as an all-around truck you can have ones with more power you can have ones that get better gas much but you can't get ones that'll last as long as this with the power that this has keep driving down the road and this one of course you'll never get stuck because it's four-wheel drive on top of it so now you know what to look for if you're looking at a tundra if you got a choice get the timing chain model don't get the timing belt model and if you own one Unless you want to make money or you're moving somewhere or you can't drive anymore because you're too old or something happened to you, I would not advise you to sell it. If a guy like me checks it out and shows you, don't worry about any of that crap. It doesn't mean anything. It still runs like a top. doesn't burn oil. Everything around it works except for the tire pressure monitoring system. <laughs> All it needs is a battery. That's it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.